Right now, I'm at the point in my career exactly where I want to be. Ever since I was 11 years old, I, I, I always envisioned myself as a world title holding my own belts. There's people that say they work hard, but they don't really work hard. You can ask anybody that I'm around inside the gym, I really do work hard and I have that mindset if this guy's doing this certain amount of rounds, I have to do one more than that. If this guy's doing this certain amount of miles, I have to do one more than that. And just, I always want to outwork my, my uh, opposition. I mean, I'm only 22 years old and to be doing the things I, I've been doing, I beat Carlos Cuadras and Rungusai, two of the four kings in the super flyweight division. And I never really look back on what I do and I, I feel like I need to go back and appreciate what I've been doing. I really do downplay it sometimes and I mean, it, it's just, I guess it's humbleness in, in me. There's no pressure. I mean, I, I feel like I, I, I was uh, I was born to be here. I was I was born to be performing on these stages, uh, headlining my own my own cars on the zone, co-headlining for Canelo. It's just it, it's all been a part of the plan, and it's just uh, it's amazing to see it to finally play out. Especially now, um, you know, holding my own world title and beating two of the four kings, and now co-headlining for Canelo. It's just every, all, the, all, all eyes are on me. Um, everyone's going to be tuned in for that Canelo fight, so I really need to perform the best I can. This is the house that I grew up at. I, I mean, we've had this house for about 20 years, so most of my childhood was spent here in, in this house. And you know, this is this is where everything happened. All, all the all my amateur career, this is where I spent it. And you know, this house means a lot to me. This is the living room right here. So my mom, you know, she has the boxing pictures up. I got some amateur pictures here. This is from my pro debut right here. And this is one of my paintings. I, sometimes on my, on my free time, I like to paint. So that's what, that's one of the paintings I did. And then got a sparring session right here. My brother's fights right here. My brother's first, he headlined in LA at the Belasco Theater. And then got an old sparring picture right here. This was one of my first sparrings actually. This frame right here is probably one of my favorites because as you read, it's my first fight. Got the ticket and everything. 2010 is when it all started. I mean, it was for a bell and I lost, so. You know, it, it really hurt, but it was more motivation to come back and get a win. But still, after that, I lost two more fights, but I still stuck with it. My two top believers and supporters have been my mom and dad. My mom has always said, you're going to be world champion. And my dad as well, he's always been there, uh, my ups and downs. My dad's been there by my side. It don't, it don't matter what the situation is. So they, I mean, they, they work more hours than they should have. And, you know, we, we've gotten a lot of loans from, from different companies. So they sacrifice a lot of their time just to give us uh, an opportunity to uh, to jumpstart our career. They took a lot of their own life to give it to us and that's why we are where we are. Thank thankful to them. But like I said, my mom, she's not really she's not really too much into like being in the in the mix, so she's more low key. But she's definitely one of my biggest supporters. I got some old pictures here. It, the, the first day I stepped in the gym, it was it was like I fell in love and that, that's why all my old drawings is it's most of it's boxing. This right here is the one that went viral on, on Twitter and Instagram. It's crazy because I was watching like I was watching this documentary on Adrian Broner and he said that one day he said to his mom that he's going to be world champion and his mom told him, you know what, you go go and write it down. So once I heard that, I was like, I mean, I've always believed I was going to be world champion. So I was like, why not write it down? You know, Adrian Broner did it. So that's that's when I did it. Uh, seven, eight. This is from 2012. I um, started believing I, would, I could be world champion as I was 11 years old. It's when Nonito Donaire and Brandon Rios were training with Robert, I believe. It was around that time. That's when um, they, were, they were winning world titles themselves. And to see that, because th those two are my favorite fighters, so to see them win their world titles, it just, I was like, I, I can do this myself. And I envisioned myself uh, carrying my own title. And I would write it down every, every day in school, or even when I would come home and do homework, I would write it down. I believe that gave it more power. I, I believe like my, my whole work is a big part of why I'm world champion. A, a lot of a lot of these fighters, you know, they they have the vision, they have the they have the confidence and everything, but they don't they're not willing to put the work in. And I, I believe that's what makes a difference with me. I have the I have that same confidence, that same vision, and plus I put the work in, so that makes it even you know even more helpful. And like I said, it's reality now. And here I was I was about to I was about to fight. At the, I think this is the junior uh, the silver glove regionals. My brother right here. He's always been a big supporter, been by my side through everything. So, uh, me and my brother were, were closer than than 
we're closer than usual brothers are. I have two other brothers, but I feel like me and Josh have gotten a lot closer with boxing, um, traveling as an amateur. I've always, always, I was always with my brother, and even now in, in the in the pro in the pro game, um, I, we we train in the same gym in Riverside, California, with Robert. So, just being around him, it, it, it's amazing, and he's like another father to me. When my brother won his world title, that that's when uh, I, I was happier for that one than when I won my own. Um, Seeing my brother happy like that, it just it meant everything to me because I, I look up to that. I look up to him a lot. So to see that, it made me even more motivated to win my own. And when I did win my own, it was a dream come true for the both of us to be a world champion at the same time. And even for my family, it, it's always been a dream of, uh, of all of us to, for us to be world champions. So for us to be world champion at the same time, it just makes it that much better. Before I signed with Matchroom, I was, I was, um, I was having fights you know, scheduled, but then they would fall through. I even had a, a world title fall through. So when I signed with Matching, that's when my life really changed. And ever since my, my world title fight, my life has just been amazing. The only reason I took the Carlos Ballas fight was because it was for a world title. I never expected to be at 115 this early in my career. It was, the original plan was to pick up a title at 108, 112, and then 115. But when that opportunity came, I couldn't pass it up. And honestly, I, one word to describe it was crazy. I was, it was just, it was about to be fight week and I was just there drinking my coffee and, and I got a call from my dad. He was like, you're gonna fight Carlos Ballas for the world title. And it never really hit me, but you know, once it was finally said and done and finalized, that's when it really hit me. And I was like, oh, oh shit, this is, this is for real. And I mean, everything came so fast, but I feel, I feel like it was just, it was destined to, it, I, was, I was born to be there in that, in that position. And I mean, ever since then, my life's been, been it's been for the better. Even after that fight, I was I was talking to Robert. We were planning on just vacating the belt, but then we got a title defense against Rungasai. Now we're fighting the co-main for Canelo, but I, I do I do still plan on going to 112 and picking up title there. Even with that fight, um, when it was presented to me by Kevin, he was like, um, "We're trying, we're working on you fighting Rungasai here in San Antonio." I mean, that I read the text and I was like, "There's no way, like that that's that's a dream right there." So when it finally happened, that, that's when I, you know, really locked in and I headed back to Cali and to, to fight here in San Antonio at, at the new stadium, Tech Port Arena, it was just amazing. And uh, during training camp, I was reading comments, oh, he, he's too young, he, uh, run besides too much. That, that's why when, when I won, I fell to the floor because I proved so many people wrong and that, that just makes it that much better. Canelo versus Golovkin, those are two well-known fighters. Canelo's the face of boxing right now. So to open up for him, be the fight before him, it's just in a, it's a perfect platform to become a superstar. I'm, I'm, I'm already on the way up there, but this fight will finally, uh, you know, everyone will see who I am. Uh, Israel, Israel Gonzalez, he's fought for the title two or three times, I believe, but he's fell short. He's a tough fighter. He he took Choi Latito the distance 12 rounds, so I expect a tough fight. But I'm at a I'm at a different level right now, and I feel like I'm gonna be able to get him out of there early. <laughs> Undisputed, that that's very possible. I've, I've seen the the fighters at 112, and I, I feel like I could beat uh, any of them. The toughest fight I believe would be Nakatani and then Edwards, but I feel like I, I'm on a different level than them, and I'll be able to get him out of there, pick up their belts. I, I never know when to stop. And I, I already beat four of the two of the kings of the super flyweight division. And this guy truly is the limit. I'm only 22 years old. I'm not having to hit my my man strength yet. And I just took out the the hardest hitter at 115. So to go to 112 is going to be is going to be dangerous for anybody that steps inside the ring with me. September 17, you're going to witness um, a legend in the making. Uh, it's going to be a star making performance. Um, Gonzalez, he's he's been in there with the best. He took Chocolatito the distance, but you know I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make him I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take him out early, and that, that's a promise. When it's all said and done, I want to be uh, one of those fighters that um, 10, 20 years from from now they're like, oh y'all remember Bam Rodriguez? He was a bad he was a bad dude, and I, I want to be one of those one of those legends.